Hello PFA, I'm coming to you here from Station 10 uh, as part of the 2018 Spring Hazmat Handoff. This is going to be a multi-part target solutions assignment uh, with one portion of it being this video. Uh, we're coming to you in this format in an attempt to be uh, respectful of your time and be as efficient as possible uh, and also introduce you to some new equipment and some changes. Uh, this video here is specifically related to our air monitors, uh, some new equipment that we're getting as well as uh, redistribution of equipment that we already have. Uh, so briefly I'm going to walk you through uh, a few changes that we're going to uh, implement in our system. Then we'll introduce you to a new monitor that all you'll be seeing on the street. Uh, from there we'll go into some um, reporting requirements and um, after that we'll show you a quick uh, introduction to the monitor itself so you can understand how to operate it and feel more comfortable using it on the street. One of our goals for this video is to introduce you to our new frontline monitor. This is the QRA 3. Uh, this is going to be a change from the Q-Ray 2 that you're all familiar with. Um, just wanted to give you the background on this monitor. We did do extensive testing with it. We uh, beta tested it on Engine 10. Um, we also brought some um, monitors in from other manufacturers to make sure that we were doing our due diligence and choosing a monitor that was going to work for our operations and be something that everyone was comfortable using. Uh, after our research and after our trials, we did settle on the Q-Ray 3 as our next frontline monitor. Um, some real pros to this is that it's very familiar to all of you. It's going to have a similar operation to the QA2, so there's not going to be a large learning curve in figuring this monitor out. It's also a robust monitor. It's uh, pretty tough. It's got an upgraded mounting and charging system that we think is really going to uh, improve its performance over time. And it's just simple. It's a, a down and dirty four gas monitor, nothing super special, um, but it does the job for us and it's a consistent monitor. So um, this is the monitor that you're going to be seeing out on the streets here very soon. And um, next we'll go into its operation. Next we're going to give you a brief introduction to the new QA3. As you can see this monitor is very similar to the QA2 and the operation is very simple. It's a two button system just like you're familiar with with the QA2. Um, it has an on button as well as a yes button or an advance button. To turn it on you simply press and hold the power button. The unit will light up, give you a beep and power on. It will then go through a self test. The monitor is just checking its software and making sure everything's operating appropriately. After the self-test pass, it will take you through a brief menu. Nothing terribly important here. It will show you which sensors are installed. While this monitor is warming up, let me show you a few of the basic parts here. First, I'll show you the filter. This is at the top of the monitor. The filter will pull particulates out of the air. It also takes moisture out of the air before it enters the unit. Air is pulled in through a pump, run across the electrochemical sensors here. It then uses that uh, information, that data, to generate information that uh, the user can can interpret on the screen. Okay, after the monitor is finished warming up, it'll take you to the screen where it asks you if you'd like to fresh air or zero calibrate the monitor. We want to hit, go ahead and hit start here, at which point the monitor will start a 30 second fresh air calibration. We want to remember to do this uh, every time we use the monitor uh, before we take it out on a call. This is going to set the baseline for the monitor and allow it to operate appropriately. It's also a good idea to do this every morning when you're doing your rig checks. This will allow you to make sure the monitor is working uh, appropriately at the beginning of your tour and if it, you encounter any issues we, you can address it before your shift starts. So it'll take you through this 30 second countdown at which point you will come to a screen that shows you that you passed all of the zero calibration for each sensor. So you'll see pass next to each one of the uh, sensors. From here you can go ahead and hit the exit button which will take you to the live screen of your readings. So here we are now at the um, main page or the main screen. This is showing you what you're currently reading on the monitor. Again, you can see this is a traditional four gas monitor with CO, H2S, LEL, and oxygen sensors. We're not going to go through the specifics of these sensors today because that's outside the scope of this class, uh, but feel free to uh, review any of our previous uh, PowerPoints or lessons on air monitoring. This is a simple two button configuration. If you hit the yes button over here, that'll test your alarm. You'll see that the monitor lights up and it gives you a brief audible signal. That just ensures that your alarms are functional. The other button here is uh, the power, also a mode button or a scroll button. And with this button, you can scroll to the various screens on the monitor. If you push it once, you'll come to the peak screen. Push it again, you'll go to the min screen. Again, that's going to be the peak value or the minimum value that your monitor saw since the last time you fresh air calibrated it. It also has an STEL screen and a TWA screen. 
These are functions that you won't find yourself using regularly, but they are available to you, and sometimes they do come in handy on calls. As you continue to scroll, you'll just get basic information like battery life remaining and voltage. You'll get current runtime. You'll get an uh, indication of what gas the monitor was calibrated to, and then a screen to enter communication mode, which will simply be done by the air monitor technicians. If you find yourself in these back pages, just continue to scroll until you find yourself back at the main page. From this main page here, you can also see the battery life indicator on the top right. You can see a turning symbol, which indicates that your pump is running, and a check mark at the top indicates that your sensors are calibrated and the monitor is ready to go. At this point, you can turn the monitor off by simply pressing and holding the power button. It will take you through a short countdown, and the monitor will turn off. You can mount the monitor back in its charging station, and you're good to go. Attached to each monitor, you'll find a reference card. This reference card has LEL sensor uh, calibration conversion factors. You guys will be familiar with the way that this works, but essentially you know that your monitor has been calibrated to methane. If you're reading a flammable vapor that is not methane, you need to use a correction factor to get the appropriate reading. So for instance, if you look at the card, you'll see the correction factor for gasoline is 4. So you would take the reading that the monitor shows you, multiply it by 4, and that's your actual LEL reading if you're in an environment where you're dealing with gasoline vapors. Obviously this requires you to know exactly what uh, substance you're monitoring for. If it's an unknown, um, assume the readings that you're getting on the monitor are accurate. There's safety factor built in. Again, the monitor will alarm at 10% LEL, which gives you fair warning that you're starting to enter a flammable environment. On the other side of the card, you'll see each of the four gas sensors, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, oxygen, and LEL, and you'll see a breakdown of where the alarm points are for each of these sensors. There's also a note on here about oxygen and what a drop in oxygen readings may mean to you as a responder. So some of the upgrades from the old Q-Ray 2s to the new Q-Ray 3s is the charging dock. A um, couple issues we ran into was the way these things are mounted into the engines. They tend to bounce around a lot, so it kind of messes with the electronics. Also, we're kind of concerned about the poisoning of these sensors with these just being exposed to ambient air. So we've come up with a couple solutions with our new Q-Ray 3s with the mounting dock that I'll demonstrate to you now how to put those on your engines. So the, one of the upgrades that we came up with with the new Q-Ray 3 monitors is the charging and mounting dock. This is what you guys are going to see mounted in your apparatus. This mounting dock does uh, three things for our monitors. One, it holds the monitor in place and it keeps it secure to keep it from bouncing around. Two, it charges the batteries in this thing. And three, it keeps the sensors warm, that way this thing is always ready to go. So the way this is going to look in your apparatus is this monitor is going to be mounted with the holding case down. Now another issue we're running into is these sensors being contaminated by ambient air with possible pollutants in it. So what we came up with is a new cap system that's going to go on top of these. The way this is going to look mounted in your apparatus is uh, the unit in the charging dock with the cap filter on there. When you go to use the unit, you simply unscrew the cap. This is going to remain connected to the docking station. You lift the secure bar and you pull the unit out. Now it's ready to go. To put it back in, just make sure it's lined up and make sure that's clicked all the way down. And then go ahead and put your cap back on. It's really important that when you go to use these things, when you take the cap off, you ensure that the moisture filter remains on the unit as you're using it. So make sure you're not taking that off with this. So while messing with these things, one thing that I've noticed that um, I know we're going to run into, but I wanted to make sure we get it out there on this video, is the little clip ring that you can use to hook it to your jacket or whatnot. Um, it needs to be in the fully up position or the fully down position for this thing to mount properly. If you notice, if it's at a slight angle and you go to try to put it in and it hits the back of the mounting unit, it, this thing is not going to be fully secure in there. So just make sure when you guys are putting this in that it's fully up or it's fully down and make sure that this thing is cleared all the way around the top. So you notice the red light on the unit. This is indicating that the unit is secure and it's charging. Uh, once the light turns green, you'll know it's fully charged. When not in use, you want to use, leave the Q-Ray 3 in the mounting and charging dock. It does a number of three things. Charges the battery. Number two, it keeps those sensors continually warm so they work properly. And number three, it just keeps it secure so those things not bouncing around the apparatus.
With the rollout of the Q-Ray 3, we're going to be doing some redistribution of the monitors that are in our system. Um, we're doing this based on a number of factors, um, so let's go through the basics of that now. All frontline engines and reserves, as well as the battalion chiefs, will be staffed with a Q-Ray 3. Um, this is going to be your frontline foregas monitor. Engine 10, Bureau 1, and the assistant fire marshal will have a red multi-ray light. This monitor will have the sensors O2, LEL, HCN, H2S, carbon monoxide, and a PID. The support companies as well as Safety 1 will have a yellow booted multi-ray light. This will uh, have the sensors CO, H2S, O2, LEL, and HCN. This monitor will be wireless capable as well. The idea here was to put what we would consider to be fire scene monitors on the support companies. If we need to clear a home for smoke um, or products of combustion, we want to make sure that a monitor with HCN is available. And since the trucks are going to be at all fire scenes, we decided to put this monitor on the trucks. Additionally, this monitor is wireless capable, which will be used in tech rescue calls such as Conspace and Trench. The black booted monitor is housed only on HAS-10. This again is a wireless capable monitor and they are set up for specific tasks and functions. We have a water treatment monitor and a confined space monitor. Uh, the water treatment monitor has the typical four gas sensors, but additionally it has a chlorine sensor and an SO2 or sulfur dioxide sensor. The con space monitor has just our typical four gas, which is the con space sensor makeup, but again it is wireless. So these are the four monitors that you'll see throughout the system here at PFA. We just want to make sure that everyone's aware of where they are housed and the specific functions of each of these monitors. If you find that you have an issue with your monitor, there's a couple steps you need to take. The first is to grab a spare from your battalion chief. After you've acquired a spare, we want you to go on to the internet and fill out the uh, reporting form so that the air monitor text can get out to you, your station or get your monitor and perform the appropriate repairs. So in order to do that, go to the PFA Internet homepage. At the top, you'll find Equipment Detail Forms. Within Equipment Detail Forms, you can scroll down to the Q-Ray EDF. Click on that link. That will open a Word document that gives details on this piece of equipment, uh, things such as the program manager, uh, where these units are placed, uh, and various other details. Within this page, you're going to find a link to fill out an air monitor service request. Double click on that link, which will open up your Outlook and create an email and a template for you to fill out. So on this email, uh, just be as specific as you can about what problems you were having with your monitor. Answer every single question on here and go ahead and hit send. That will send the form to the air monitor text, at which point we'll get out to your station or uh, find the monitor in question and perform the appropriate repairs. If you experience issues with your monitor or you simply have questions about air monitoring or um, specifics of a call that you'd like help with, feel free to reach out to any of the air monitor techs uh, on each shift. On A shift, that's Eric Lobato and Nick Akayas. B shift is Kelly Farlander. And C shift is Josh Olson and Steve Doe. Uh, we can provide you with additional information about your monitor. We can help you troubleshoot issues and we can also help you begin the process of uh, repair and replacement. That concludes this section of the 2018 spring hazmat handoff. If you ever have any questions about the air monitor or their use, feel free to reach out to myself or any of the other air monitor reps on your particular shift. Thank you and have a good day.